a small little lesson. It's all a bit small. We don't go overboard. But it's about appreciation. In life, you're going to meet. You're going to do things for family. You're going to do things for your children. You're going to do things for your parents. Maybe if you're very pious, you might do something for your brothers and sisters as well. Most people will find it more easier to do things for their children and their wife than they do for their brothers and sisters, which is very bad. So in every family, you know, sometimes you find that one brother, one sister who always thinks about the family and thinks, you know what, how can I benefit the family? And sometimes people don't appreciate that person because he keeps himself more free for the family. And my father was one of those people, you know, he would always make himself available for the family, even if it meant sacrificing some income for himself, personal income for himself, personal money for himself. Um, you know, he would sacrifice his own needs and desires. This is what ikram a Muslim mean is to do ikram for your for your Muslim. And sometimes you might do stuff for people. If you do it for the sake of Allah, then when they do something bad to you, even though you're doing something good, yeah, you're doing good for them. And they don't appreciate the good things you're doing. Um, and they don't respect you even for it. But if you're expecting that respect, if you're re expecting appreciation for the good you did, then that means you're not doing it for the sake of Allah. And yes, there might be, as a human nature, when you feel disrespected, when you feel lack of appreciation, when you feel the person is not uh, you know, even recognizing what you've done, then automatically it's human nature, human nature, you will feel bad. So if you stop doing the good things for them, or if you expect still gratification and some sort of reward for it from them, not Allah, from them, then you're not doing it for Allah. Do you understand? That's how you know when someone truly loves you. So true love is, is that when the other person doesn't love you back, the other person doesn't love you back and doesn't give you back that love and doesn't do the same amount that you do for them but you continue to do it that's when you know it's true love so even in life when you do things for Allah maybe you'll feel that Allah is not giving me back you know maybe he's not returning back the favor maybe bad things are continuing to happen in your life and this is a test from Allah this is a deception from shaitan that he makes people think that oh Allah doesn't love me or maybe Allah is not even there. I'm just, you know, doing all these good things for no reason, for nothing. So it makes you, you know, go crazy sometimes. So same with human beings, you know, at the end of the day, they're all humans. You know, and they've got their own emotions, their own problems. We don't know what they're going through. Even if it's family, sometimes family members are going through something and you don't know. And you're just thinking, hey man, I'm seeing this guy, you know, do this and do that. And I don't, I don't see him. I don't know why he's acting this way. He's been, you know, doing, relaxing all this or doing this. But you don't know what they're going through. So at the end of the day, you know, as I've always said before, don't try and understand human beings. Human beings are extremely complex. So don't expect appreciation. Don't expect even a jazakallah or a thank you or even a smile back when you do something good for someone. Do it. If you're doing it for the sake of Allah, expect a reward 100% from Allah. Don't expect from the people. Because people will break your heart. And when they break your heart, many people use that as an excuse to stop doing it, to stop doing good. And that's what shaitan does. Shaitan won. And the test that Allah put on you, you failed. You're a loser. And you think by getting angry, and you think by getting upset at those people, that you're winning. That you're showing your, you know, that this is not fair. Life is... Life isn't fair. When do we said life is supposed to be fair? Allah is going to compensate you in the life after, after, not this life. The Prophet Sallallahu said this life is a prison. A prison for the believer. A prison. And what is it for the non-believer? It's Jannah. It's paradise. They can do whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want. For Muslims, we have to always look what we are doing. So, it's a hard life. It's a hard, not like... <laughs> Stop it. So it's a hard life. It's, if your life isn't hard, you got to be worried. There was one uh, Sahabi woman, عنهم, and she married someone, and his life was rosy, cozy. So she said, I want a divorce. So he didn't give it to her. He said, I don't understand why you... 
So she went to, you know, uh, someone higher up and said, you know, wherever Sharia go or to the Prophet at that time, I don't know. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She went to, I don't know the full story. She went up to him and said, I want a divorce. He's not giving me a divorce. So they said, why do you want a divorce? So he said, because this man, I've seen, I've seen him throughout his life. He never has any problems. And I know as a believer, you're supposed to be full of problems. This life is supposed to be a test. So I doubt he's even a believer. So this is what it is. You know, life is supposed to be difficult. Human beings are supposed to be difficult. It's all a test. So don't act for, earn for appreciation. It's all about imaniyat. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, one of my favorite hadiths about the best iman. The best iman. The Prophet ﷺ said that if you love for Allah, hate for Allah, give for Allah, and withhold for Allah, meaning you don't give for the sake of Allah, then you have perfected your iman. Just think about that first point, to love for Allah. How many things do we love? We love so many haram things, unfortunately, nowadays. So imagine how much effort we need to make on our iman, our faith, to make ourselves do everything, every action for the sake of Allah. Do you understand? Everything should be for the sake of Allah. So the way you know you do it for the sake of Allah is that if those people you are doing it, doing it too, if they, if they, if they don't give you back the gratefulness or appreciation, you continue to do it. That means you're doing it for the sake of Allah. So anyway, Allah give us tawfiq to act upon what said. So don't feel bad when people don't appreciate the good things you do, because at the end of the day, only Allah will truly compensate you for the good that you have done. Do not ever expect it from human beings. Filth! Human beings are full of filth and full of deficiencies. That's why the heart should be 100% love with Allah, not with the people, not with insan, not even with your wife and children. It should be only Allah. But of course, human beings, we will have some love because that love is what motivates us to take care of our children. It motivates. But even that should be for the sake of Allah. Do you understand? That's what the story of Ibrahim is there. Where he wanted a child for so long, but when Allah gave it to him, yeah, what did Allah do? In an old age, he loved children probably more than any human on the face of the planet. That's how much love Allah put for children in his heart. But what did Allah wanted to show the people? This love needs to be reduced and my love needs to be increased. So what did Allah do? Allah test him throughout his life and in his entire, in his last portion of his life, when he's so old, so old, like that's when Allah gave him a child. And what did Allah say? What did Allah say? You must slaughter this child. So you understand this is the sacrifice Allah wants to see. Of course, Allah didn't make him sacrifice the child. It was just a test. And he was ready to do it. As extreme as it might may seem, Allah wanted to test him to the extreme because the prophets are tested the most. And then the best of the rest are tested. Yeah, so if you are the best of the rest, then you will be tested. And if you're just a normal dude and you're just going by, then of course Allah will give you test according to the reward he wants to give you. The more test, the more reward. The more hardship, the more suffering. You know, like I can't imagine my, my dad, my father, how he's suffering for the past two years, two years. And he's been in bed for like six months now. Four months of those is literally disabled, disabled, can't get off the bed. In that, I don't know how many times shaitan must have come to him and made him angry and make him think so many thoughts, you know. So patience, the pay reward for many things Allah has mentioned, but the reward for patience, there is unlimited reward. There is no limit to the reward of patience. So may Allah give us to our patience with people, with situations in life and act accordingly. I see we went too long again. Yeah, like, yeah, like I like it.